I am dirty. This is not a rolling start before everybody starts complaining. It's a rolling start. I get all confused. It's Patrice O'Neill. And uh, thanks for coming out. I appreciate you doing this, man. It's been a... You're one of the top five podcasts in the world right now, aren't you? I started number one, and I was looking at the iTunes charts, and my wife came. And, she and you lose like, to Bill Burr quite often, I'm sure, right? No, Bill, I like his podcast a lot. Bill is playing Carnegie Hall, man. It's part of the festival, though. But it's Carnegie Hall. Right, but I mean, it's not like he... <laughs> He's so, and I love Bill. I mean, he can't, oh, he can't do nothing with complete credit. No, no. I, no, no, no. I would completely give Bill it's credit. Cause, it's just really because it's because of a lot of factors. <laughs> so is so Tom Arnold. It ain't, so is John Panette. It's, a lot of it's part of the comedy festival. Oh, man. I mean, like, Tracy played Carnegie Hall. That surprised the shit out of everybody. That's true. I'm like, damn. Uh, I thought it was his podcast. That's why I, I really like Bill's podcast. It really, it's one of the few that I actually put into my iPad. I listen to like on planes and when I'm sitting in trailers doing nothing. So people are going to be angry at this because I know I think, well, Joe Rogan, I don't think Joe Rogan reached out. I think people were like saying, I should do Joe Rogan's. And then, um, I did Mark Maron's. This will be my second podcast. All and right. I know Bob has been trying to get, Robert Kelly's been trying to get me you on You know here. what, dude? You come by, you get a coffee. But but he's not, like, you set it up. That's the thing about when you're, like, <laughs> meaning Bob, Bobby asked me to do it. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. But it's never gonna, it's never getting done. Is that your phone or yeah. Voss's car? <laughs> <laughs> It's like you're getting it, you're getting it done. I do. How? Because I said a time. Well, because you, you get you you go. It's like um. So let me turn this off. Sorry. That was Frosty saying he can't make it. I didn't know he's he coming. He wanted to come. Make it. I don't Enjoy. want him. It's just, we got enough people in here. We got exactly the amount of people we need. None. Exactly. Well, my girls here, but Vaughn and Mabel. Yeah. And room service coming up with crab cake. So I get it done. How? You got Com- me in, comparatively. Yeah, it it just it actually uh happened. So that's that's why it actually happened. Bobby Bobby said wants me to do it, but we ne- we never get it done. So I think Bob might be a little mad because he asked me to do it. Uh, how was Marin's? It was interesting. I didn't know. I just you know I was talking to Marin. Me and me and him have this. Uh, me and Marin got a. Uh, it's a weird thing because I, I a love hate Marin. relationship. Nah, nah. I like he hates me. I kind of like him, but then he likes me at the last second relationship. Nah, he's he's a weird dude like that. I, I understand what that means. He, but he's he's one of those dudes, man. I mean, you're one of those guys. Colin's one of those guys. I, I'm I'm one of those guys. Marin's one. I'm trying to think. Atella's one, where people are very nervous. Um, and intimidated. People are intimidated by Marin. I'm not particularly intimidated by him. I like Marin. I, well, I, I see. I've heard that about me, and I never understood. I, when I met you, I thought you was a, a complete and utter asshole. Like complete. I was, but it wasn't to me. I understood what that is. But that's right there is what turned the battleship around in the harbor. But Bert Kreischer was on the podcast, and he goes, "I don't think people understood the Tupac that lived within you." <laughs> Until nah, Nikki gunned him I, down on Flamingo Boulevard. I, I, who, your, your woman? Yeah. I, it, it, I was always I, angry and it, playing catch up. I, look, I understand, I understand that. That's why I don't, I don't judge dudes that, that have that. Cause I told a lot of people, I said, if I don't talk to you, then I don't like you. If I'm not teasing you, if I'm not busting your balls, as, as white guys say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If, if I'm not doing that, I don't like you. I don't have words for you is when I don't like you. Right. But when I like you, I'm fucking with you. So so even if you meet Voss does it, he'll give somebody a dollar. It's insecurity. I don't Headliners are talking here, please. I always thought funny dudes 
Well, do, you funny. Think do you think that's an East Coast comedian thing? Because the L.A. comics, they act like you just came in and pissed on their comic books. <sighs> but you and me, we talked about this a little bit on the phone. It's like we would walk into a room and go, look at these five fucking assholes sitting at this table. You, you can, can you hand that to her? She needs it more than I need it. We, we'll walk Thank in, you. We'll walk into a room and say, like, look at these fucking jerks sitting here. Like, just to guys, like, and we'll know one of the four guys. Because I don't, I right? don't, look, I don't, I never understood how you can be funny without being funny. Meaning, I've had people, I, I, I don't know if I'm, it's like people get into a, a, uh, a, a mental jousting thing with you, like, Oh, and it's supposed to be funny, but you don't like each other, right? Like, like this thing that you did. Now, now when I when I say about you, I have to say it, I understood it, but my thing was aggression. You were aggressive. Yeah. Your thing was aggression. Like a, I can a, tell you why. I with it, care. it wasn't. It wasn't that you was fucking with me. It wasn't you was. That wasn't the thing. It was the. It was aggressive where you go. Is this dude trying to make was, sure he is he trying to get a position? Right. But at the same time, I was doing what everybody else was doing. I was just doing it more. Now, ag- do you aggressive. feel you was doing it when you were doing it? Was uh, it a purpose or were you, were you being malicious or were you being purposeful or was you being just just you and just being you? It was me and it was it was because it's like when you I was always 2 years younger than everybody on my street. Okay. And when I wrestled, I wrestled at 105 pounds. So all the guys that weighed like 118 kicked the shit. Like when you get beat up by 120 pound guys, like they're real men. <laughs> right. So by the time, and then when I did open mics, I was 16 and everybody was like telling me I was shit and they were 30 and 40. And here's where, here's where it changes is when you're breaking balls, and you and I talked a little bit about this. So I'm glad we're talking about this again for other people to hear. When you're breaking balls, like you said, you, like there's a booth. At Gotham, and let's say it's Quinn, uh, Voss, and then three guys we don't know. We'll walk up and go, "Look at these fucking idiots!" Or you know what I mean? We'll right. say, what but those three saying? guys are going, "What's his problem?" Like I don't know who he is. He just called me an idiot. But here's the thing: when you do Jerry Maguire and you come in and say that same sentence, people go, "Whoa!" It, it, I think it's approach because to me, I was still the guy on the stoop with me, you, and Keith. Right. And Colin and Red Johnny and the round guy at the Boston Comedy Club right, where right. we just shit on each other until the sun came up. Right. And then when you go out west and you make two movies and come back, all of a sudden that shit ain't so funny anymore. Well, I think too, if somebody's fucking with you, they think they think fucking with you has changed because you you uh because you are in movies. So people are nervous about, they might not think you're the same person. And you might not think, you might think the ball busting is coming from jealousy. As opposed, your ears might change. When you come from doing Jerry Maguire and somebody goes, ah, shut up, Jay. You're like, you might feel, cause let I me, mean, let's be honest, the, the higher, it's hard to keep yourself in check when your profile is, 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 is rising. You, you, it's hard to, that whole thing where they go, hey, keep you, you know, stay grounded. Yeah. It's very difficult to stay exactly how you are because I, I get noticed more on the street and I'm, I'm a people guy, but sometimes I catch myself being how I can be a douche. Do they think you're Oliver Miller? No, never. Give me a I'm laugh, tall son enough. of a bitch. I'm not tall enough. I didn't mention your Hitler mustache yet, so keep going. Son, Colin talked about that. <laughs> but I'm telling you, this shit is a triangle. It has, it has, Hitler's it's, in it's a square. A, to you got the Michael Jordan Hitler mustache from the Hands commercial. We should stop saying, <laughs> black people should stop wearing that Bunk, just to yeah. go, boom. Yeah, no, we like it. It's and a it's chaplain. Charlie Chaplin. It's, exactly. I like it's that. A cha- it's a chaplain. I said... On the podcast, I said, you know how fucking crazy you have to be to show up to do a product like Hanes, and you roll out of your trailer with a Hitler mustache? With the on? Hitler joint. Like, what? Like, but, nothing's going on? And they go, hey, Mike, have you been to hair and makeup? And he goes, yeah, why? Oh, no, <laughs> yeah, you got a Hitler like, mustache. It's Michael Jordan. They know they got you for like, and with him, it's like, you got 14 minutes. Like, then you got 13 minutes. And he'll tell you the whole way. You got six more minutes. You better get your shot. And they go, just say it, Mike. Just say it in the camera. And he goes, oh boy. I, I shaded with a triangle. I think it was, I think it was, I was trying to get a Carmelo Anthony going. 
but it, it, Love I guess it's, it's. I'm surprised uh, the Celtic want to, fan wants to look like a Nick. Oh shit! So Ooh. what you you said stay grounded, but when I came back east and we started breaking balls at like the Boston Comedy Club, that's that's when I felt the most grounded. But little did I know, I was taking it up a notch to like the boiling point where people were going. Well, maybe you were trying to prove that you was. You was still grounded, but it came. It might have came off yeah. different. I mean, There's no it, doubt about it. It and changes. I, man, you change. You can't not look. I, I, my girl told me this. Like I'm way too accommodating to strangers. Like I talk to strangers. And I just have started conversations. And, you told them, that? And, and I just stopped it. And it's it's hard to do. Well, it's hard to when somebody says, "Hey, Patrice, what's yep. up, man?" And you for you you go through that like. It's four seconds in your brain, but as fast as your brain works, it's like a 50,000 person Rolodex and situations and places where I could possibly know this person from. And you, I'm betting you, Patrice, you don't want to be like, fuck, this person's going to think I'm a dick because I don't remember them from that thing. I, and then you go, hey, what's up, man? And then you realize halfway through, I have no idea who this person is. I, I now, I try to carry myself like a dude that you shouldn't, like if you go, Oh, that's you, the dude from, especially if somebody says something. I, I, years ago, I did this show, The Jury, and I saw, um, the lady from Ghostbusters. That's who she was to me. The, the, the old librarian from the Ghostbusters. <laughs> Evidently, this woman is some kind of, uh, Oscar nominated. Hey, hon. Yeah. Who played the librarian in Ghostbusters? She's an old lady. She's been in night court? No. She's, she's like, right, so you, I'll look at it. Sigourney Weaver. No, the old lady from The Librarian. Well, we'll figure it and out. And she was in a, she was in the, the movie where, um, where, where De Niro was retarded or, or sick or had a stroke or something. Oh, uh, Helen Merritt. Helen Merritt. Yes. She said that's all of them. That's, a, that's, <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> it was, uh, <laughs> was it Helen Merritt? No, Helen Merritt. Stiller Mer- and Merritt. Just the, the old lady that played the librarian, but but she got mad. Oh, you saw her. I saw her. All right. And she got mad because I I she was I said, man, I recognize you. What you do? And then she's like, what you do? Yeah, right. And she's like, have you have you seen? You must have seen the movie. You know, love is a tender moment. Like where I want to ask, and I'm like, no, ain't it? Alice Drummond. Alice Drummond. Never heard of her. Alice Drummond. And so, so, so she goes, she was so disappointed. Good old, what's her name? Yeah. So she, so she was well, disappointed. She's an asshole. She's but, but this is what I'm saying. I knew her from what I knew her from. Right. So I go, I go, I knew her from Ghostbusters. Right. And she said, and she breathed hard. She went, oh, Ghostbusters. She I go, on, she was on the Cosby show. Like, she, I'm looking at her IMDb right now. New York News, Tu Wong Fu. I know her from the Ghostbusters. I'll tell you right now, lady, you ain't shit. <laughs> but she got upset. So sometimes if I see Maybe somebody in the street. Maybe you didn't see me in Tu Wong Fu. <laughs> if somebody sees Stupid. me on the street and say something I don't like, I notice that I get. Like, if somebody's like, you know, <laughs> like when I was going to Brazil, they call me, uh, Patriki. So if somebody's like calling me Patriki in the but street. But that's because they don't speak English. Nah, Patriki, like, because they know. No, no, no. When I went to Brazil, I got this nickname Patriki when I used to go to Brazil all the time. And when I came back and did the radio, I talk about it. But they call, or Norton wrote his book. Norton wrote his book and put Patriki in there. <laughs> And now, you know, some people might go, Patriki, just straight up say Patriki. So it's like, hey, how you doing? Oh, I love to, you know, come at you a certain way. Right. But they'll just go, Patriki. And you go, you look, and I give them a, hey, what's up, bro? Like a real nasty kind of. Don't fuck with me. Yeah. Today, today, today. Or, or not even that, but like a more of a, what's up, man? I'm walking the streets. Hey, how you doing? I acknowledge your existence, but, you know, don't call me that. In the street, because you're gonna get that. But I could give you a lot more though. I'm a dude that will talk to you for right. a good ten minutes if you like. When you know it's an off-duty cop. If you, if you like, know, hey, what's up, man? You staying safe? <laughs> <laughs> if you if you act in a certain way, I'm gonna give you something. I, I'm I'm really like that dude in the street. And so the thing right now in my career that I'm getting used to, Jay, is uh, is this idea of not being able to be in the street. Or not being able to... It's nutty, man. Not be... Like, you can't be around everybody like that. 
I was at the pharmacy the other day picking up like sodas. And Dwayne Reed and the lady goes, I haven't seen the pharmacist because I haven't been in New York in like six months. And she goes, how are you doing? It's Russian there. I says, good. She goes, you had a baby? Like, so she, I haven't seen this lady in six months. She knows I had a baby. I haven't seen her. Like from the news. Right. The fake, you know, that bullshit news. Right. And she goes, oh, that's why you look so tired. But I just slept like 11 hours, and I had a nap. I felt great, and I looked at her, I go, no, nope, just ugly. And everyone in line and looked at me like, and looked at her like, this is really uncomfortable. But people say, like, the stupidest shit, and I think it's because when you're a comedian, they think they know you. Like, if you see Jim Carrey walking down the street or Eddie walking down the street, people aren't going to be able to stay away from them. But if you see Pacino walking down the street, it's like this reverence, this silence, like, Holy shit, Michael Corleone! But that's that, that's why they should have more. The, the documentaries that they have about comedians have never touched on the complete. Well, one did that was close, maybe, but the complete misery of of comedians, man, the miserable people. I, 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 Are you miserable? I'm all, all the time. Cause I'm. My <clears> wife <throat> says I don't. She she thinks I'm an actor that acts like a comic because I have none of the. Miserable. I'm always happy. Yeah, I'm. Miserable. I have no no damage like thing that happened to me. I'm miserable just because you just wake up pissed off. Yeah, I wake it, up it like keeps, let's go it kick keeps some me ass. Going. I wake I, up, let's do it. I don't like disappointment. So so I'm miserable like. But see, I just file disappointment. Like it's just like when they hit hyperspace on Star Wars, right? And all those lights come at you. Like just some of those are disappointment. You just let they just fly past. Like fuck it. Keep going. But I mean disappointment just on a basic day of something spoiling my happiness. This mean it's just if I sing, feel like singing the zippity doo Having to come here, I'm sure you were. Uh, you, like, it's a great idea. And then when you actually go from Jersey City to the city, you're like, what the fuck am I doing? Well, yeah, you're thinking of ways to. Yeah. But I, but I'm, but I'm. I would have come and got you. But I, but I, I actually. <laughs> <laughs> She's coughing like I don't feel good. <laughs> JJ, I can't come in. I gotta call. <laughs> I I actually am getting a lot better with that because I I go okay I'm gonna do it because I start running down immediately I start running down excuses to not do something yeah and then I'm like well he's here and is is you know he's asking I I got nothing to do so I'm trying to get into this thing where really... where I don't have no 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 wait <laughs> I have to I'm 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 trying to get into this thing where I don't. Let laziness stop me. I've done that. I've done, I've said, I've made, I've, I've fortified an excuse that sounds really good, but it's, it's based on really laziness. But I'll have, I'll have an amazing, an amazing scenario to make this laziness legitimate. If you, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, we've all done it. So if I get out of like stuff with your family, like, yeah, ah, I broke my arm. Exactly. I just broke my arm, Jay. And they see you like two days later, and you're like, you know, it turns out it wasn't broke. And you yeah. got this Steve Cato. <laughs> yeah, I slept, I slept on my arm, man. Patrice, I never said I broke my arm. <laughs> it's so inside. So I'm, I'm saying, real, I'm, I'm not so saying you know, I did this. I'm not saying I did it because I had nothing to do. I was I'm saying, saying, that's what we're I'm saying for, that I was, I, I was, di- no, I was, I'm saying that I did it because I, I didn't have anything to do, but I, in, my instinct was to go, I can't do it. That's my. That was my instinct. Like when I did Mark Marin's, we did it at the studio when we were both doing O and A at the same day. Oh yeah. So I almost couldn't get out of it. So it was like, it wasn't like, oh yeah, I'm doing this as a favor to Jay because I'm not doing nothing. It's more or less, oh let me. I don't have. I'm not doing nothing on Monday. So all I would do was just. It gave me an excuse to get up and actually be in show business. If that makes sense, yeah. Because I would, I would just stay in the bed. And people will come to your shows because of this too. If this will be out like uh, November, the Dece- if you got a December date, same here. I got. Oh, I'm supposed to say this. Uh, More stories podcast is brought to you by. Are you Uncom- getting paid, you son of a bitch? No. And now I got to do it over because you just you you you. I'm going to interrupt if you're getting paid for these podcasts. No, I don't make a penny. Really? Never took a dime. Brought real. You never bravo- took a dime. Is not never. I've never gotten paid. Really? Never is it a labor of love? Yeah. It's because people go to your shows when they hear it. I mean, you get paid in the long run when people go, when you're at like the Tempe Improv and you go, this is oddly full on a Thursday. And they're yelling out lines from the podcast from like two months ago. Really? Yeah. How long have you been doing it? This will be, what, like six, 17th, the 17th one or so? 16, 17? 
over a course of what this year? Every week, every Thursday it comes out. You you've only been doing it six months, maybe. What's that's it? That? That's Is that started in like June with Barry Katz as my guy? I couldn't even get anybody to come to my house. What 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 was the what was the motivation? Uh, every opening act on the road was like, you want to do my podcast between shows? <laughs> What's it? Why does everybody that's opening for me have podcasts? And then Tom Segura was in Vegas with me and Tommy's super funny. And he said to me, I didn't sell a dick. And he goes, if you did the podcast, when I first talked to you about the podcast, this would have been sold out every show. And I said, really? And he told me how Rogan does like, he had to move from clubs to theaters because of, not because of UFC, because of podcasts. So I did it with the super long term vision of, I want people to come see my comedy because I like making people laugh. And I want, you know, when you do the radio and you go through all the motions and then you go up there on a Friday and they're like, eh, a little slow. You know, it's game two of the fucking Potsdam intramurals. And you're like, I don't give a fuck if it's game seven, Russia versus USA. Like, I'm here. Let's do it. Right, right. So I just wanted to sell more tickets. So it's happened. I saw it already. But did you think that it would do that right away? I was told in no uncertain terms by Tom Segura, by Joe Rogan, and then by when I talked to Kevin Smith, it was... You know, you don't understand. This is what's happening. I said, so this is like the future. And they went, no, this is now. Like, you're actually on the wave now, on the board, surfing this shit into where it's supposed to be. Like, you're not ahead of it. You're not behind it. It's exactly right now. This is what's happening now. Like, radio is going away quick, and everyone's going to start doing podcasts. And you can just drive home. Like, today, you and Vaughn could just hit, like, the Holland Tunnel and go let's listen to like someone we want to listen to like our fr- like whether it's you go anywhere you go Adam Carolla you can go like Cornell West you can go Rogan you can go Marin so what are they hearing this on they go to iTunes and they download it and it goes into their iPod like if they're going to the gym listening to music it's it's ridiculous okay, somebody when i did when i did another podcast so i don't give a fuck i'm saying okay good Marin when i did yeah. Marin WTF Mark Marin, the number one podcast in the when world. When I did Marin's, and he was doing it, it wasn't, and this wasn't a long time ago. It was basic. It was like when I did it, I was like, this is interesting. I was looking at his setup, and I went out that day and got up the whole setup to do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is going, you stupid. Like, <laughs> like, I went out and bought Radio Shack. I bought this. I bought this whole thing that I'm looking Radio at. Shack. I swear to God. And I'm going to need a lot of batteries, partner. I went to, I bought the bigger version of, of this thing. I bought a small this thing. Yeah. You were I the TR eight oh eight. I bought you called mics, it nice everything. You needed a backup. Right? I'm almost I'm probably gonna buy this. C D P crew. This is I, the whole thing, man. I'm telling you. Go- I'm gonna do the podcast. And then I was like, ah. Cause you went through Guru's will, <laughs> see if he left any see Premier left any equipment behind. I went the whole thing. And then, and then what's it doing now? It's I don't even know where I put it. I know it's in my garage. The all equipment somewhere. You have a garage in Jersey City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got Jersey a City to me, because when I grew up, Jersey City was just concrete, bad news. But now I think the Nets are they responsible in part for like turning the city around? Oh. No, no, not, not even a second, not even close. It's just they rebuild it because it's a it's all a the radio stations there. are there. St. Pat, St. Saint something University. Saint um, something, the patron saint of what? Saint something, Saint Patrick. No, that's that's him. Good old what's his name? I think it's Saint Patrick's University. They <laughs> bought up a lot of that crap. <laughs> Is it Saint Patrick? No. Saint know. John's. Saint Peter's. Saint Peter's. Saint Peter's. In Saint, Peter's City. Used, Saint Peter's. Saint Peter's University. So and they also all the stuff. radio stations moved across the river, like Z100 and all those people. They're all there, but they're, they're on the water. The I live deep in in Promiseville. Like they promised to. When I bought my house, and when I went into the, <laughs> when I went into the, uh, the thing to buy acres it. acres and a dog. And they showed that they had a painting <laughs> of, uh, of what it was going to be. So then you had the house up, like you could buy Oh, shot. this is what it's going to be. The Jetsons, they had, ten, everybody had one of your dogs. And, and, and everybody. Jet packs. Everybody had jet packs. Everybody had this. It's, oh, this is in Eight three years. Pool. And then what, how, what do you got? Just like a it's condo? A, it's a, um, it's the first phase. I live in the first phase of, that gonna, a, of a five-phase construction 
promise. But aren't you going to be pissed off when Phase 3 goes up and you see how nice it is? Phase 3 is not going to ever happen. It is, I live in Phase 1, and the rest is, is, is surrounded by uh, dilapidated Yeah, it gets rough buildings, quick. Yeah. Bad, a bad trucking company, uh, and it's the foot traffic from the hood. To, it's a shortcut where I live. It's a shortcut <laughs> from the hood to the hood mall. So yeah, it's it's a shortcut from Mount Luther King Boulevard to the Hudson Mall, and that's where all the foot traffic. So you got a whole place where people got Beamers, Benzes, guy has a Porsche, uh, Hummers, and that's the foot traffic from Martin Luther King Boulevard to the Hudson Mall. So that's where I live. They were, it was supposed to be a gated community, but then the, the whole... So no wonder you wake up angry. It, it, you get mad. Do you look at the painting? Do you have the painting from they sold I wish the I had the painting. The, the, whole, the whole... I wish I did. I wish that I had the promise. But I got bars and everything on my walls, man, on my windows and everything. I have a lock that you only can get out. You, have to, you need a key to get out. And not you, you can't get and out without a key. you have a fucking key. poodle. I have a little pool and a little westy. You would think in that neighborhood you would just go Rottweiler, get it done. Well, that the whole it was. Uh, I don't like big dogs. I'm not picking up big dog shit. That shit That's is right. horrid. When you put the plastic gloves on, I used on, to have it. Uh, uh-uh. and sometimes that the, dog shit, I I'll get a receipt out of my pocket and, and pick, I'll it pick it up. Exactly. Or sometimes I just kick it into the street like a little. Pizza <laughs> pizza. But when we were talking about people coming up to you in the street. Mm-hmm. When you're a comic, they think they have license to break balls the way we break balls because they'll hear us on Opie and Anthony in the way. But they that, don't know how to do it. That's that's the that's where I'm going. Is the point. So don't yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> you're like Jay, you asshole. And this is it because it pisses me off. Don't be like, hey, Patricky, what's up, man? And like, if Bobby took a shot at you or Jimmy said something, they'll say that shit to you, or like they'll say shit to me, and I'll be like. This guy doesn't know me well enough to talk that shit to me in the middle of fucking Amsterdam Avenue. But not even if he don't know you well enough, he doesn't know how to do it. Right. He doesn't, they, 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 if they think, it's like these roasts. I keep telling people, okay, I did this roast, but I'm saying there's something missing from it. And that's camaraderie. It's love is missing from it. It's not just, I'm going to Google you and say horrible things about you. That I found out yeah. on the internet. Like we're all friends with David Hasselhoff. So, oh, can I roast him? He's my pal. How did Jeff Ross get to Yeah. <laughs> but he doesn't, but that's, that's what I'm saying. Jeff is. She's kidding. No, I'm thinking about oh, Jeff. I know you Because really... it gets me to, you know, I think about this stuff, man. It's like, look, it, it I did this roast. The Charlie Sheen roast. The Charlie Sheen roast. You, and you dominated the Charlie Sheen roast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I did that roast. My instinct was to say yes. Like they asked me to do a few others, which we've established is against your everyday instinct. My, right. Your natural <clears throat> instinct is to, to say, say no. no. So what was it about this? I truly, without sounding like a, a, a sanctimonious, let me figure it out. It was a lot of pieces. Saint, meaning one was, let's say it's supposed to have been the highest rated. Roast ever. Yeah, it was, okay. I'm sure, right? So, but they, they called me a week ahead. That, what helped is that they called me a week ahead of time. Just a week out. They had been planning it for six months. They know how to get to Patricia. That's what they put. They bet call- your agents were like, if you wanted to do it, just call them like, just call them the night before. The night before. That, <laughs> it was a week. And I was just like, they asked me, and I'm like, I said, I think I want to do it. Cause, but <clears throat> why, why I'm saying I, I didn't want to play it like a douchebag is cause, Char- I I really liked Charlie Sheen when he was fighting the system. I I, I enjoyed that. Why? I I enjoyed watching. watching Did you him enjoy his stance? Uh, Two million dollars a week, and you're you're see that's not that that's what made it even better is that the two million dollars a week. I, I would love to have that as a guy. Yeah, but he said goodbye to it to go on some bullshit tour. But as a guy that made not that on uh-huh. a sitcom. That got canceled. That was good. And my, I thought it was good. I, you know, if they came to me and said, we're going to pay you $2 million a week, but here's the thing. Every Thursday, Chuck Lorre, the showrunners would come up and you're going to have to suck his dick. And I would say, what's the bad news? And I would do it well. Like, see, I, but that's, that's, that's the thing. Some people don't, some people, see that, 
That's more money than A Rod makes. But that's, never, that's not a motivating factor to me. There's never an away game. It's that's eight million a, but a month. That's, but that's the motivating factor for you. That's not, not the blowing Chuck Lorre. Two no, million a week doesn't motivate Chuck you. Lurie. No, Chuck Lorre. You're being phase well, four. I, 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 two million is the motivating factor. Sucking Chuck Lorre's dick is what you have to do to get that motivating factor. I'll do. I don't care. I would do it. That. But see, that's there's no argument there because. Yeah. I wouldn't suck Chuck Lorre's dick for two million, and I'm not even trying to be she on would top make of the mountain. You. No, she wouldn't. Oh damn. No, she wouldn't. So for two million dollars a week, let, so would you do a shitty show that you? Well, do put it shitty? this way. Wait, let me see. Let me even be on your side a little more. All right. A little more. Suck Chuck Lorre's dick. I'm I trying to say I without his argument. Don't, don't be gay. I'll do it. Yeah, I wouldn't let you. I'd rather do it than I would have you do it because I would never get that shit out of my head. <laughs> why would you? Why would you even say that? What? Yeah, we like. like I. Right, well, how about my girl? That's what she's supposed to be doing. It's giving head. <laughs> Not to Chuck Lorre. Yes, if he would let her. If that. If I went that way, if he would let her. And what are you kidding me? Why would I suck a dick? Look What's at she gonna way? think of me? Where are we going? Wherever, if I'm sucking dick, I know this is a figurative conversation. Wherever the fuck you want, because you got eight million after taxes and two months. So you think I can buy her? Look, it's better. It's better for her to have. But on a side note, right now our wives are in the corner on the couch going, "I would suck his dick." I wouldn't let him do it, but I would suck his dick. Put it this way: pick a job you like, you never work a day in your life. I picked Flo. She said, "Pick a job you like, you never work a day in your life." My wife chose Blo, and I can say, "Yes, you did." And I'll say, "I enjoy your work." Thank you. So, let me say, let me say this to you to say to make it like so it's less of a a disagreement and just like I go look if they said. Patrice, we're gonna pay you two million dollars a week, but you gotta suck his dick. Once. I would I would I would cry because I wouldn't suck his dick. Because I would go, fuck. I need two million dollars a week. But I would feel bad that I wouldn't suck his dick. What if no one knew you were gonna suck his dick? Nah. Only you. Ah. What if Vaughn never knew? Internally, nah. Nah. I, I built my mind, so I'm, it, I you like money, but I don't love it. you phase four in Jersey City. For, it, it's fine. It's the fine. next day. But here's the thing. It's fine. Charlie Sheen never had to actually suck anyone's Yeah, dick. my wife has a salient point. Charlie Sheen never had to suck anyone's dick. He had his face in box for 14 up. years doing blow. All he had to do was show I up. I like... And he pissed it away by acting like, uh, like he couldn't I know. Be, I, get along I, well with I others. I like a human... <clears throat> I, like, I like a human factor in Hollywood sometimes. The, the, I heard a story about Chaz Palminteri that I love. That I love is that you you want to hear a story about a guy who just I, I hate the fact that everything that makes you a better human in this business ultimately is dumb. Integrity, pride, fucking self respect. It's dumb. It's what a dumb thing dumb? to have. It is what? in this business. The guy that those just things hold, is stupid. Time Jim. out. The it's guy that, dumb. Hold on. The guy that just said he would not suck a dick for two million dollars said having integrity is dumb. No, no, no. Meaning that's what you just said. Listen, I'm a. I'm a see, I right. can't back me in. I know what the fuck. I'm just saying it again. Break it. Good go. When I'm saying not sucking a dick <laughs> in this business, in this business, right? But in other, business. it's dumb. So the, I'm saying the things oh. as a human. You went the other way. With the it. things that you do where you go, where you go. I'm, I'm gonna make a stand. Like Chaz, Chaz Palmentary told his story. Basically, it's like he said he will not do. They they wanted um, a Bronx Tale really bad. He told the story on ONA. He wanted a Bronx. The, the Hollywood wanted a Bronx Tale really bad. And he's like, look, I want to play. Um, I want to play. Uh, the guy. What's the guy's name? I don't know, but the, the guy that he played in the yeah. Bronx Tale. And he's just like... St. Peter. Saint, what, what the fuck is his name? Who cares? It doesn't affect the story. Keep going. Anyway, he wanted to play the gangster. Yeah. No one would let him play the gangster. They kept offering him more and more money to play to say, no, you're not playing the gangster. We want to buy it. You can play the bus driver, but not the gangster. Right. He's like, I want to play the gangster. He even went Sonny. He wanted to play Sonny. He even went in the bathroom and had a moment of, what the fuck am I doing? Why am I not just selling it and then moving on? He had some integrity there. 
So finally, by chance, he met Robert De Niro. De Niro said, I want to make this. You can play Sonny. I don't give a shit. I'll play the bus driver. And, and, and the rest is history. I love stories like that. But in the midst of his story, he was wondering, what the, f- what am I doing? Having dumb integrity. That's what I mean. I, I enjoy. Would, pay, would you say it paid off for him? Yeah, it paid so off. So then how could it be a dumb thing to have integrity? Because the journey in Hollywood terms, because even him this in the room. logic. And even in the bathroom, when he's starting to question his own integrity, it did work out, but that's that's 2020. That's hindsight. But I'm saying he was starting to feel why am I why am I taking a stand against what Hollywood would tell me to do? Sell my thing, play the bus driver, and shut your fucking mouth. When I hear a story where a dude goes, he goes against the the Hollywood thing, and he wins. I I I love that story. I just I just like, think it's like, a possibility. Like Stallone and Rocky. Completely, like, I'm not doing it unless I can play rock. Unless he does his thing. And then finally, it, it's like... And it took him years to be co- Yes. It's weird when you think that Rocky came out before Raging Bull. Because you think of Raging Bull as, like, this work of art. And it that, seems older, the way it's filmed and everything. Yeah. It looks like an old movie. Yeah. But it was it was a, a, a lot after. It might have been, what, f- no, it was six years? and 80. Three years. Okay. So, <clears throat> my thing is, the Charlie Sheen thing... But he didn't win. He lost huge. Money wise. Money wise he lost. But not he lost his kids. That had nothing to do with Chuck Lorre though. That's his and personal. The whole I'm talking about the Hollywood. But thing. the situation that made him lose his kids. His is kids the same is a thing. different thing. I wouldn't say losing his kids was I'm saying it's the Chuck Lorre beef. Because the behavior that made you have Chuck Lorre beef on set is the same behavior that made you lose your children. I wouldn't say that. Well, how could you not say it? I wouldn't say that because drugs and because firearms and hookers and kids. I'm still a woman, and people might go, "Well, how?" I don't abuse my way out of my out of my relationship. I might have abused Yet. my way out of out of business stuff, uh, out of out of opportunities, maybe. What do you want to do? I would love. We just talked about this recently. Who are you and fucking me, Mark Marin, your buddy now? My good buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mark Marin. That that podcast was a moment in time. That that podcast. Don't yeah. even pay that any attention. So, I'm just breaking your balls. Um, so I'm sitting here looking at it right now. I man. know you're mesmerized by the blinking blue light that says 23. Don Mattingly, Don Mattingly, Don Mattingly, Don Mattingly. <laughs> what do you want to do? I want to. I'm, I'm just have to. Tough tough crowd was the closest I've ever come to like being completely. Uh, <laughs> I'm just picturing you in that when you were in that fucking singlet. You dressed. It's in somebody's avatar on one of the websites. I, you were dressed like a prostitute and like a. Oh, they. Oh, the um. Uh, <laughs> I forget. See, but well, look, that is an example, dude. That was in the cut, where I'm going in my in my mind. <laughs> I'm going. All right. I'm with big tranny. <laughs> That's what it was. And I was a tranny. I was a Dominican tranny. So awesome. you look good, mommy. <laughs> awesome. So I'm going. Well. Dominican, Dominican tranny, uh, that, that was it. Oh, Dominican tranny, uh, Jane Campion. Yeah, that's a ballsy move. That's but, but I'm saying she was, this, this woman is, um. My wife's saying yeah. you made a big. Yeah, right. This is my mentality. Yeah. My mentality to that is. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, fame. How, I was how, chasing something. Wait, how did Jane Campion become a Dominican tranny on Tuck no. Crow? Oh, I, right. Okay. What Tough crowd. Listen, you guys. Are, you I went. To, I was you because you was you. Yeah. You the one I was talking about in the cut. You brought that up. The right. avatar. Yeah, yeah. That's why I switch. I switched to the to the to the the thing where my mentality it goes into this fame chasing thing. Mm-hmm. This thing where you chasing something. Do do instinctively do I want to play a a big fat Dominican sissy with a fake accent that sounded terrible, but I did it. For fame, because I thought it was just like saying, "Okay, play a retard." You, you're gonna play a retard. Okay, good. That's that means fame. Yeah. But this is your I am Sam. This is my. <laughs> I'm fucking, this I'm is tough, it, baby. On tough ground. Oh, so, but t- somebody's gonna see me playing this, and they're gonna make me Forrest Whitaker in the crime game too. Thank you. 
Thank you. <laughs> Dope. Thank you. That's what I'm doing. So that doesn't make me happy. Shut <laughs> it. Hey, but that's what you do in Hollywood. I know. You I just do that. To blow a guy for a job. You gotta get one lazy eye. <laughs> you, you gotta. Yeah. You gotta get that Forrest Whitaker lazy eye. So tough crowd. When you asked me what I want to do, yeah. tough crowd was what was up my. You want to be Colin? I want to. You want to be on the panel? I want to be able to. No, what it, the, the, what it was is like, for me, I would love to be uh, John Stewart, or I would love to be uh, Anderson Cooper, or I would love to be even Jimmy Kimmel. I would love to sit and tell my point of view, no matter what it is, without any angle, without any political uh, 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 association. Your angle. My angle, and just really talk shit and tell my opinion, to be honest. But right. But to get paid for it. I, I've given away a lot of my spirit. A lot. I don't I don't know how much that's the thing about the podcast. You have you you have a mentality that I that I actually envy, which is just keep it moving. You know? I I if I do this like I used to do a podcast, me and my woman and my friends, we used to do this podcast, Patrice O'Neill show coming soon. It was really fun. But you just you just don't get paid and people the people, the the the, the fans it, 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 you know, you see it with Twitter a lot. Yeah. They don't. They really don't care. They just will. They they take sometimes. Right. And I don't have. I don't. I think I have. When I was twenty, infinite well of uh, spirit. Yeah. Uh, now I can. I I'm very. I'm I'm very uh, 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 discreet with my spirit because I think I might have a. Uh, 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 I give it away too much. Like podcasts every week. They'll demand the yeah, Jay they, Moore podcast. This shit was week. late one day, and people lost their fucking Where mind. Where the fuck? And you go, I'm hold like, on, free. man. It's free. And, and I don't need, upload it. It's Kevin free Smith. for them. It's free for them. Yeah. But it costs for you. This co- this costs time. Your, if you your, kept your, doing your podcast, You have that's the thing I was told, is you got to do it the same time every week, and you have to just keep doing it. Some days I might not. But then they go, oh, dude, all you got to do. And I, that's another thing. I never want to feel like I always feel. I think you're the same way. I need a way. Watching you, that you that you feel like you don't. You could give a lot less, but you don't. Like you watch people out there that that do what they do, and you can go, boy, I don't need to give. I can give twenty five percent of myself. Don't you see comics and you go, this guy's not even. He's this, not even. He's not talking states. to anyone in the. I've been in the audience of comics, and I thought, I'm in the eighth row, and somehow he's not talking to me. He's yeah. just going through. He's doing his thing. Yeah. He's just. And doing I, it. I hate that. Like I always do this joke with it, the guy that features with me all the time on the road. Uh, he goes. I Shit's go, about to get real right now. You think so? Uh, no, I'll, I'll, I, I, know, I know I, not. That, <laughs> I know for a fact. No. <laughs> Push pause. Should I go to like moan or something? Yeah. Moan some shit. He goes. He goes. Can't get the flashlight. He goes. You think so? And I go. I know not. No. He, goes, he, he said, "Press pause." <laughs> I just got up. One thing I ain't it ain't happening ever. No, never. It's all. It's been a beef already behind that. No, I don't give a fuck. Oh, no. I want that. I want that right there. That's what I want. Yeah, Five foot eight, hundred and change. That's all I want. My twink. Yeah. I like twelve year old boy with big tits. That's the. That's what I like. All right. Don't undress for the guy. No, Jesus. I, like Peter Pan. I, like twink. I thought it was. I'm, I'm beyond it. I thought it was. <laughs> I thought it was going up further. And I wasn't going to do this either. <laughs> I wasn't going to block my... I was going to oh, stare right you? at him. Okay, good. Oh, crap, what's right. this <laughs> All right, all right. Let's, let's take it easy. I got no shame. All right. <laughs> but, uh... Man, we was, uh... You... You see people giving 25% less. Yeah. And you think the podcast, you don't have it in you to give 100% once a week for a fucking hour. Bullshit. Bullshit. No, no, not not, not saying That's that. That's genetics, man. Not not saying that. I'm saying, like, I joke around. I go, I'm only going to do 45 minutes tonight and if I'm doing a, a, a show. And then, and then I say that every night. I go, I'm only. Do but 45. I wind up doing an hour and ten. I right. can't get off. I'm not having a good time right. because you there's an instinct to do the best you can. So sometimes, okay, 
let me let me finish. You got it. Let's say I was talking to Bob. Bob, like, dude, all you gotta do, even if you don't, just get up and just talk shit for an hour, or or do something in a in a in a the dressing room in between this. Or and I'm that's what I mean about not giving a hundred percent. Which is if I can't if I set my standards at. I want to interview Jay Moore. I want to interview Colin. I want to. I want to talk to this guy. I want to do. I want to go down to the to the uh, uh, protests, you know, yeah. and talk to people. If I don't do that every Monday, where I'll feel bad. I'll feel like I could give a shitty podcast, and it's good enough. That's what I mean. I don't want to. Yeah. Do good enough. I want every week, and that's what I'm not sure of. That I'll start to get angry because I'll go. I'm giving you motherfuckers too much of me. I'm dying inside. But how can you ever equal that relationship with your audience if you always feel like you're giving more and they're, ta- never, they're vampiring you? Never on stage. Oh, I know that. I've seen on you. on stage. It was for those idiots occupying Times Square. I was going to see Saturday night. But they the, fucking the, ruined it for everybody, hippies. If, if... See, the audience has to give when they're in the in the, in the crowd. That's what I mean. I'm talking about it's like tug of war. And I'm glad you you making it making me make it clear because I could I could say some things and it's in, in my mind is clear. I'm saying the arbitrary um, world of the internet, the arbitrary world of arbitrariness. Just you're doing this out of love, and it's you're just putting it out there. But I'm saying when I do shows and I see you, I know that you're giving. Yeah. And even if you're not giving, I know I'm a, I'm a, you're going to give. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to grind I'm you down to a nub. See you. Yeah. You, you feel me? And, and I'm going to get everyone at your table to wonder why you're not laughing. Yes. But here's the thing with the podcast is I'll do sometimes like, uh, Matt Paxton was here from Hoarders. Mm-hmm. You, Quinny's coming by. And then when I get to L.A., I'll do like two comics right in a row. And then I won't have to do it again for a month. Because right. I'll have a, like a catalog ready to go. Oh, you'll just have it. Right. I, I yeah, but I, that's, that wasn't my intention. But I, I realized that subconsciously, and now it is very consciously, any endeavor I do, I need a way out. When they say, hey, like, if, do you want to have the David Letterman show? You go, well, yeah, that's like the dream job of all time. And then you realize, holy shit, if this goes well... I'm years. never moving. You're, you're, I can't, you're an old man. I'm never doing the comedy works in Denver again. I'm never just going to be in a hotel going, can you send up chicken wings? I'm watching Fright Night. Now, there's nothing that you're going to want to ever stop doing comedy? No. And, but to me, it's also... What, uh, spinning plates always has the connotation of like, whoa, like shit's about to go wrong in any second. But if you can have spinning plates be a positive visual, you're just spinning a lot of plates. You got a lot of irons in the fire, they say, but spinning plates is more applicable. To me, each plate has a little bit of money on it. So why, why put money aside? When I was doing a sitcom on my week off, if I can go get half my weekly rate of a sitcom by driving to fucking Phoenix, only a fool to me would leave that behind. Because then you can live off the sitcom money. I mean, you can live off the stand-up money, and you can just bank buy a house with your sitcom money. So there's a lot of stage a lot of your five. motivation is money. Well, yeah, I'm All married right. with I'm kids not, in a house. Look, I'm not trying to say I get a mortgage. Bad, no, but that's what I'm saying. My motivation. My motivation when I started a lot was of to get happy. Though, how, how much of it's happy? Are you I is cannot, money your happiness? No. I made almost zero dollars this year, and it was the happiest year of my life. That's what I'm saying, Jay. Though, so you, you, you are not that I'm making an argument, but it's that's. But I don't want to have to sell my house in another year from now. You're in a position where your happiness meets meets your finances. Like, like you're in this town, right? In this nice hotel, right? And you can afford it, and you you can really afford it. Meaning, this is not a splurge. This is no. It is you can afford it. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to do Governor's Night in Long Island just to pay for... To supplement. The only reason I'm doing stand-up in town, Gotham I had booked, and like I did the Stress Factory, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I got a corporate gig. You had the Stress Factory when? I was there last Wednesday. Oh, okay. And I, I went and I booked these nights 
so that I could stay here and be happy in this room. I get it. But, but money is a, of course it's money because money, people say like, Hey, money can't buy your happiness. No, bullshit. it can't. I, I, bullshit. I feel like, like, like money Biggie can make said, you Biggie real said, fucking, uh, you know, more money, more problems. Bullshit. I don't believe in that. No, I, more it, money. It helps. Let me call a guy to take care of the problem. But I mean, in terms of when you broke, you got to fix the toilet yourself. <laughs> you're down there. People, you got to take the lid off and put your hands in that stinky water. Like, and when you're rich about the office, like, Oh yeah, you stand off. I, 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 there were things that were happening on the office. Not that they were doing to me, but that for myself. I didn't know you were in the office. Yeah, I did. I was like five or six episodes, I think. Uh, something like that. And I was there enough, and I did well enough to stay. But it was just the the, the 18 hours of grinding. and the 18 hours, It's crazy. The 18 hours of grinding for not me. And then I would do things that I thought was giving 100% to the cause. And I realized I couldn't give 100% to that cause anymore for myself mentally. It's not like I quit. It's just like I just left. This is where I, this is how I feel about that. I'm giving 100% for my representation of me of, on that cause. And when people watch this show, they're going to go, Jane was fucking funny. And to me, whether it's true or not, I'm always playing catch up. I'm still the guy that's 12 and everybody else is 14. So when I'm doing a guest spot on like Suburgatory uh -huh. and I'm playing Cheryl Hines' husband, I'm like, all right, she was on Curb Your Enthusiasm, Absolutely. the ad libbed show of all time. Right. So I got to make sure I land some monsters in this scene. Right. And when the director yells cut as I'm about to speak, I got to go talk to the guy and go, you know, you might want to, could you let it breathe a little? I, I have some really funny lines. And he goes, well, let me hear him. I'm like, no. So to me, it's, do I want to sit around on a show? And I know exactly what you mean. And it's mind boggling that for a half hour show can take fucking 18 hours right, right. is like, and a sitcom. Meanwhile, they do a switch like a Bugs Bunny, that big switch, that light switch on the wall that like a sitcom, they just light it. You just walk in. Like, Vaughn walks in, you walk in. Nikki walks in. It's just lit. No right. matter who comes in where it's lit, every right. once in a while they'll change something. But for me, it's like if I was you on the off, just I'm not – I have no opinion of what you did. I didn't even know you were on it. So right, it's right. not like you did this wrong. I would say this is fucking bananas. But you know what? When people watch this, they're going to go, fuck, Patrice is awesome. And, and, and I agree. But here's, here's my – here's where – I have a reputation as a as a as a. Um, but let me ask you this: How does the show, uh, super the show the what the work to the show the grind? How does that supersede your personal desire to stand out on the show? Because it was two things, and again, this, this, might, shit down, this might be this might be <laughs> silly. Okay. It's it's what what I'm working to be it's like what what do i want to be do i want to be known for this or do i want to be known for something else and and it's you, like I, 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 wait a minute wait a minute no, no, so sure. let me get to why huh? i did because when i was younger in the business known as a bridge burner asshole but when you were bruiser when i was bruiser from uh roxbury yeah yeah that's why I said guru earlier, because I know he's a Boston guy. Yeah, so I watched that. A lot of people don't know I'm bruising. That might bring back old, uh. Fuck him. Old memories. I'll get my little Yorkie to kick their ass. So. All right, so. Wait, so, so, wait a second. I didn't want, I don't want to go into, I, I made a decision, and this was, I, I was trying to think about what, what, what was my bridge burning technique? <laughs> what, what, it what, there was one. It, there was. It was. This was my technique. It was uh, saying yes to things that were gonna make we're gonna was gonna push my career forward. But saying saying yes to that, not wanting to do it, but still doing it. So I do it with a bad attitude, if that makes sense. So right. I go in the, the, the podcast, for instance. I, there was a time I go, oh yeah, I do it because it's I know it'll help. But I go in and my attitude is just completely wrong. So and it, and it's just bad. Like it's just bad. It's not. Well, why is the attitude not, wrong? But I change that. So instead of going in like, like I don't think I've ever been asked to do Chelsea Handler. But I go, if I do that, I want to do it and do it correctly. 
do it where I submit that she's the boss. I submit that I'm on stage with, with Joe or, or Lonnie or whatever and, 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 and play my position. But I'm not willing to do that. No, you're so, not, you're so not Charles go, Oakley. You know, I, 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 I see a guy like you and Chelsea Handler. I go, what the fuck is Patrice doing on Chelsea Handler with these fucking, with these but that's, ne'er do But you only say that because you have an idea who I am. And you have an idea of who I am, but you wouldn't say that just because on a talent level, you say that on a presentation level, on how you're presenting, how you present, how I present myself in the game, or how you present yourself in the game. How I would perceive it? How Colin presents himself in the game. But you can see someone else doing something. When I Chelsea see you that, on the panel with Chelsea Handler, you stick out like a sore thumb. You're wearing your Celtics gear. You're Paul Pierce. You, you ain't fucking, you know, you know. But Paul, there are, there are people who are Paul Pierce's that would do Chelsea Handler, if that makes sense. I've never seen him. Um, Josh Will, no, she man. She eight people, man. And I'm not an no, guy. Not, I'm not talking about a guest. You're talking about being on the panel. Yes, b- no. being on her show. No, she has people on that show that just want to, that are just like her, her like crew. But in in reality, man, I you think would stick I out think like a sore thumb. I think in the in the world of comedy, You'd be like Kobe playing on like St. John's. You'd but go, I don't think I don't doing? think in her world, in, in Chelsea's world, I'm I'm those people. In Chelsea's Joe world, Boy is selling out theaters. In Chelsea's world, we're all in the D League. Right. Yeah. But see, you are, I think you're correct in that. I'm giving you a firm, a firm a positive reinforcement for you to think, if I go on Chelsea Handler, I have to do it correctly, and then you'd have a bad attitude about going on it. You should never be within 100 miles of fucking Chelsea That's Handler. my point. Because you're the guy, you're the guy. And there's a great expression that I heard a long time ago, and it never left me, Patrice. Tell me who you're with, and I'll tell you who you are. So when I get asked to do a show, when I find out it's a panel, I go, eh, because the panels, you always wind up with, hey, you know what, we'll get Patrice, we'll get Jay, we'll get Jimmy Norton, and then you wind up with like three fucking guys you never heard of, and some chick that was a swimsuit model, and you're like, what am I fucking doing with these people? They classify you in that position. That's it. Tell and me that, who you're with. that's what I'm saying about, that gets to my, the whole the office crust is that I go... I want to be able to look at B.J. Novak and go, you the man, let me submit to what, what, what is something in me. I'm looking at his face and, I, and he can sense, he can sense, um, the stain. Yeah. But you know, and I, and I can't hide it and I try to. So I go, look, let me just, let me not get a bad rep so that when I get right. like this Charlie Sheen thing, it, I think that was one of the biggest steps I made in terms of uh, showing showing people uh, what I do. I mean, in that in that situation where everyone was doing what they do, you know, Jeff was doing what he does, everybody was doing the thing, and I go on last. It, it, the, the whole situation, it didn't they didn't set me up to win. I just kind of was able to. I had to call on twenty years of comedy to be able to yeah. win in that. You, they, it's two outs. Bottom of the night, no yes. one on base, and you said, "Fuck it, I'll yeah. drive one in, and we'll see yeah. what happens from there." Because, because Lisa, it was a, it was a lot of pressure to do that because I was the only black guy, which goes, "Oh, okay, interesting." It hit, oh, let me go back. No one knew who the fuck I was. That's what tripped me out. I was so used because I've been doing it in my own world comedy. Right. When they go, when they, when Seth brings me out as you know, introduced to Deus, and it's like Patrice O'Neill, everybody. But that's why. And I was like, holy shit. You said earlier you don't want to do it just to do it. That's why you have to do things just to do it so that the next time you're in a situation like that, people go, that's the guy I saw in the office. And tell me, let me go back to this. Tell me who you're with. I'll tell you who you are. Yeah. When you're hanging around Steve Carell and the BJ Novaks, however you personally perceive them, you know that's the number one show on television. And here's what I've learned. And I've been on a lot more sets. Right, right, right. Okay. Everyone is jealous that we can do comedy. The greatest actor you sit, I've sat with Pacino, I've sat with fucking Tom Cruise, and it's like they were sitting next to a three-legged man with a fucking unicorn horn, because at the end of the day, they knew I was going to the Laugh Factory, and I was standing up in front of people and just talking, and right. that shit that I wrote, right. and that fucks, like that, BJ, you know, all, like, I don't know, they just, the producers especially, when they get a comic in the fold, you are like this... 
magical guy to them. You especially, because you're you're untapped. Like I've been around fucking three times. They know my shit. They know my drill. Fucking shit. I did Ghost Whisperer. That paid for my divorce. <laughs> like I was like, always one day <laughs> something paid for that paid for my sneakers. Up this one day I'm gonna get to Hollywood <laughs> and I'm gonna play. Now I'm gonna be number eight on the call sheet on a Jennifer Love Hewitt paranormal well, wait a minute, ghost what you show. Be, Jay? What is your ultimateness? I want to make movies that I, honestly I want to like play Chet Baker. I want to play. Car, I would love to play Carlin. I would love to play like serious, great dramas. Now you're waiting and for that to be offered to you, or you're going? No, I audition. That? I'll audition for anything. No, not audition. See, now I'm, see, to me, yeah. I think I realize I somehow I have to, and I, I'm not sure if it matters to you. Somehow I gotta be H and I C. I gotta be, or even close. I know you're not gonna be, yeah. but I, I I need to have. Not just be there. Like, for instance, I... Did you know that's Ralphie Mae's corporate name? H-N-I-C? Isn't that great? Of course. <laughs> so, uh, I take Billy Gardell, and I like him. Yeah. And I and I, and I, and I, I love that he's, he has a successful show. He's one of those guys you go, if he don't make it, you you feel like, oh, man, I want him to make it. I yeah. want Voss to make it. I don't want a few people to make it, yeah. so make me feel nice like guys. it's actually it. So, you look at that show, though. Even though he's on it, you, you can feel... Uh, Mike and Molly. Okay. So when I look at Billy, I'm not sure I could be him in that show because it, it feels like in that show, you know, that he's not being exactly Billy Gardell. He's being the character he wanted. But it's almost like I would, I would, you know, some shows, like even in your show, your 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 show, uh, Gary and Mary. Gary and Mary. You you when I watched it. I had a feel like you weren't the boss on Gary. No, I was not the boss. If that makes sense. Yeah. You, but you watched Roseanne. You watched that. And you felt like she was the boss in that show. But you understand by Billy Gardell doing Mike and Molly for the next five years. I know. When he comes out the other end. Right. He's got enough credit charged up to the game. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. But he. That's what, that's what he it got is. A, I feel like he has enough already. I feel like. Billy does. I had, it took me until I said what show because I didn't know who you're talking about, and I know who he is. Oh, Billy Gardell. Yeah, yeah. It, when you right, said it, I'm like, who's enough. Billy Gardell? But you should know who the fuck Billy Gardell is. I know, but he's one of those guys I can't. But meet. you should know, no. Like you should know, no. no I do no. know, no. Now, but what I'm saying is, Mike and Molly is when everyone else in America in the flyover states know him, so that when he go, hey, and Billy. Another Gar- thing, why the fuck do we have to be known in Idaho? We why don't. can't you just? Yeah. Why can't you just do a show that caters to the two coasts and some of Texas? Why? I, well, you talking about like Nielsen stuff? There's the four million people there. I don't care. If you it. if you get a three on FX, yeah. you're a multi star. The Wayans brothers I got a two rating. I don't fucking need Wyoming. <laughs> no, you don't. Why no. do I gotta get CBS? Is when you gotta be known. That, that gets you yeah. known. All over the world. Yeah. But like but, there's fat white ladies in a mall in the middle of Texas that go, I really enjoyed you on the yeah, Ghostbusters. Like, why do I have to be known there? Why not San it's Francisco, all, New York, Boston? I'll tell Philly, you why. And that's it. Because I'll tell you why. It's all putting more shit in your sack for when you go out to do your own thing that you don't have to look around and reach out for anything else. Like Billy Would you Gar- want to be Louis C.K.? Louis C. Meaning in his position, would you want to... If you had the opportunity, I think it'd be do- fascinating. Yeah, I and that show. I'm horrified to do that. I mean, yeah, me too. Do I think I have the writing, directing, and if it fails, crazy about that? Yeah, and if it fails, like, look, Gary and Mary got canceled. I don't know if you noticed. I've only been a guest star in like three shows since that, and done stand up. Failure throws a long shadow, but once you're afraid of failure, you're fucking done. You just got to get up. Reggie Jackson said to me personally and her, he said, I struck out 2,500 times in my career. He goes, if you add that in a row, that's five years of baseball. I never touched the ball. He goes, the trick is just don't put the shit in a row. That's why I hate baseball, by the way. Why? There's only one sport where you can fail 70% of the time. Eighty. If you stink. 70% 70% of the time, you can go to the Hall of Fame. That's right. It stinks. And I talked to Frosty about it and this other kid who loves baseball. In no sport should you be able to fail as much. Because cause, cause the payoff, a home run, that's great. So if the other three is a home run, out of the 70% you fail, yeah. if the other three is a home run, 
That's good. But sometimes the other three is a bunt. The other three little is pussy a, single. The other three per- it's a, just goes under the guy's on, mitt. Man, it's a, it, that, it, we, but listen, when you say f- afraid of failure, Jay, Yeah. let me backtrack. Yeah. I'm not afraid of failure because I'm in this game. My thing is, I want to, I'm, when I look at, 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 uh, Louie, it's not the failure part that, that makes me nervous. It's the, it's like, do I have the, the work ethic to do what Louie's doing? That's what I mean. Yeah, no, like, I don't, I don't shit, know. He's a, he's a, he's a monster. Juggernaut when it comes to that yeah. shit. And it's a show, don't even worry about it, look. It's a show that when I, thank you though. It's a show that when I watch it, I realize, in many lifetimes, I will never do anything as good as Louis doing that right now. Right. That sh- that episode when he went to the USO tour with the duckling, uh-huh. I fucking cried. I fucking cried when he brought. Thank you, sweetie. When he brought out that little duck, when his daughter gave him the duck and he didn't know he had a duck, and because that was from his blogs on his website he's and the a, forward operating a- base when he said to the kid, "Who's from New York?" and the kid goes, "I'm from New York," and he goes, "Where?" and he goes, "Buffalo," and the kid goes. And Louis goes, uh, that's not New York. Buffalo sucks. And a Ford operating base, you know, there's only like 60 cats. And they're in the middle of nowhere. And that kid goes, hey, man, don't fuck with Buffalo. And Louis wrote, I cried when I read this in Louis' blog. Okay. Louis wrote, the kid wasn't challenging me to a fight. The kid was saying, don't fuck with Buffalo. Because when I get out of this fucking place. That's all I got. There's a bedroom in Buffalo. There's a poster of Jim Kelly on the wall. Right. That's all there is. That's what's keep me from putting this fucking gun in my mouth and pulling the trigger right. is Buffalo. Buffalo. So when you tell me Buffalo sucks, I'm about to fucking, we're going to tangle assholes. Why Buffalo did you leave? does suck, though. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Fuck out of here with that goofy story, Jay. What? I know. I'm telling you what Louie said. I'm crying at that shit. Let me ask you. No, that was a great episode, I'm man. I'm so What I'm saying. <laughs> what I'm saying. Why did you leave the office? Did you leave or did they just say that? No, was- it was no no absoluteness. It was like they asked me to come in one day and I wasn't there and I I didn't fly in. No, I didn't. I was I was in New York and yeah. they said, "Can you come in for I, what? To just do what I do." I don't know what that is. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Was there like a like six I, line? I had a, I had, right. Yeah. I, had, I was a I was a I was a six line guy. Maybe yeah. a three line guy. Yeah, like the big which is fine. Guy. Which or was the, fine. Yeah, yeah. Everyone but, on the show is though. Right. I just couldn't do it. That to me is insane. I know. Like I would have done it's, it. To me, it's insane too. But oh, see, this is the important part of the conversation. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not. Are you lay in bed at night going, "Why the fuck didn't I just get on a plane?" Uh, no, I don't regret it because I, I I I know my insanity. There's some insanity about you that you accept for yourself, isn't it? Uh, I yeah yeah of course we all have it. Yeah. It's just whether you so accept. I it or accept. Not. I accept my. Huh. Right, it was so I I <laughs> Von said obviously I'm insane about suck Chuck Lorre's dick. Right. Like they, what what makes me insane, what makes people think I'm insane, I accept about myself. Not being not burning bridges, not making I, I've changed a lot of about making people feel completely uncomfortable. Sometimes I fuck up and I still do, but I I'm better with the things that I think I need to get better at. But I I'm not better at the things that I believe in that people think I should get better at. So acting isn't really something you're like... No, the acting process, I just did a movie with a guy Todd Rowall, Rob Riggle who... I'm, he's Lieutenant a good, Colonel. He fucking makes me laugh. Lieutenant Colonel Rob Riggle. Lieutenant Colonel. That fucker... Lieutenant man, Colonel. He's a Marine Corps. God damn it. He was on Gary O'Mary. He, he played my brother. Oh, was he on that show? He's a fucking Lieutenant fucking Colonel in the Marine Corps. One of my favorite meets in the business. You know what I said to him? I said, how many times did you go to Iraq? He goes, I haven't been. I go, there's guys in their fourth tour, they're sergeants. You're on a fucking TV set and you're a lieutenant colonel, you prick. I, 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 that guy, he, I like that guy. Like to him. Oh, perfect example. Right. Me saying that to him, he's probably going back to his dressing room going, what an asshole. I don't think he is. Not him. Right. Not but anybody around. Fight, right. Right. But he knew what I meant. Like yeah. you're sitting here making fucking TV, they make you lieutenant colonel, yeah. and you know guys, and we all know guys. That, like they do three tours and they come back, they're a fucking sergeant. It's like, I, how bad was your job over there that you came back a sergeant? After I three fucked tours? with him the same way you yeah. did, and he knew. I, he's he's a guy. Stupid Kansas Jayhawk fan. He, he loves Kansas. I, 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 I wish I had his numbers. I called him. Fucking idiot. Fucking whole states things. But he um, <laughs> he gets context. That's see, I like people yeah. who get context. I do. I, 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 I do. So you shot the movie with Riggle. I shot it. 
uh, the Rohal, Riggle, uh, Knoxville, and Pat Oswalt. This movie. It's What's it called? It, it uh-huh. was called Scout Master, but they uh, the scout the scout of America sued. Yeah, they don't fuck around. You man. can't say Scout you Master. Could, you can't do Saturday Night Live sketches about the Boy Scouts. You got to change the name. You can't. It's so it's it's a it's untitled Todd Rohal now. But the process when I finished, I was gl- after everything was over. I was very happy that but, I did it. But the process of moving. But weren't you happy TV, to be done? I was happy to be done. But that's what I'm trying to explain to you is everyone's happy to be done. You get to a point on a movie set where you're like, how much fucking longer does it take to shoot Renee Zellweger so, reacting to Tom Cruise? So we're talking about the process. Right. You got to bring a fucking and when, book when I, and take naps. When I see the process and I'm involved with it, I, I want to have something to do with the process. Like, I, So I'm saying... I think I could do what Louis doing. Right. If it, because I don't know if I, anybody could do that except I, I would have to cut out out of all the things Louis does. I think I would. I think I could do editing. I and I producing I would definitely could do. But I anybody can produce. I think the the writing part. You seen the fucking idiots hang around a set and call themselves producers? Yeah. I, <laughs> any, right, that's what I'm saying. And when they have ideas, they go, you know, it might be funny, Patrice, and you go. Really? Really? Why don't you, the guy that fucking, <laughs> really? All right. I, I was state graduate, economics really? major. Why don't you tell the comedian what's funny? I've only been in New York City zilch. for 20 years of my life. How would I hold the pizza? Do, wait, 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 doing, wait. doing shows, doing shows at the Boston Comedy Club, and like everybody who kills is staring at you. There's, there's six crowd members, and then there's 10 comedians. That are good yeah. in the back room, and you're doing comedy, so yeah. you know comedy better if than Tony Woods is sleeping. A- exactly. I, I, like it's for real. Like, it's unbelievable. Yeah. So when we did last comic standing, you know, like Barry Katz, love him or hate him, the guy fucking knows stand up comedy, and he knows comics, and he knows and he gets shows on TV, goddamn, and he knows the wiring of us. If you're the star of Patrice and Vaughn, Vaughn De Carlo show, and you're you're the star, right? Right. And you're the star. And when the network comes in and starts doing their shit dance on the two of you, Barry's the guy that can come in and go, you just have to tell them. You got it. Whatever you want, man. And then he will go tell them, look, Patrice, you know, we just flew in. He's with his wife. It's a little emasculating. You bring him down a peg. These are thoroughbreds. They just know how to run and win races. And you Like, he gets the DNA of a comic. So when he produces something, you feel like safe, but you get people that come up to you on a set and they go, isn't it funny to hold the pizza in your left hand? And you're like, that's why we're fucking not recording right now. So you'd come up and tell me that fucking right. producer guy, you fucking zilch. It you is. Still a yeah. I'm the, <laughs> I'm the lone survivor. I'm the guy. It's a, it's a marriage. There's ups, there's downs. I love them. You do love him, right? I fucking love the guy. He gave a speech at my wedding. You know why? He's the only person that knew her and me before we knew each other. You know what it is? I don't know why. I mean, I only can go back to a time. I haven't talked to Barry in a long time. I, I, why, why is he not? What did he do? I think it's honestly, I think. Cause he, he has show after show after fucking show. I mean, show. what did he do to like, make why, people? What's her name? Leave him. Like he got this motherfucker. Something. Whitney. And he always gets a show on. Always. That, but see, let me say this right now on your, on your podcast. There's some motherfuckers like my manager is John Branstein. Okay. Now, nice guy. Nice guy. I love the guy. But I'm like, uh. So when you fire him, it's Simon Katz. But that's. I look at Becky, I look at cats. And at my level. Yeah. You, that's who guys at my level. You look at Becky, you look at cats. But what's funny is guys like cats, everyone's gone through and left and come back. What the fuck is going on where. But I Dane go, Cook fired Barry Cats. That's what I'm saying. But Dane he, Cook made $9 million telling jokes. And then what? You tell your manager it fucking isn't working out? That's what I'm saying. What? With, it's that it's that loyalty Good luck, Chuck. or that thing that you go. This motherfucker. Every every I look underneath my mattress. There's a three arts 
logo. My mattress is fucking Here's the problem. produced by three arts. You know Here's what I'm saying? Here's the problem with being a manager. And this is what I re- – I think fortunately for mine and Barry's relationship, I realized this early. The problem with being a manager is the more successful you get, the less your clients need you until it comes completely full circle where you're Whitney Cummings and you have your own show and you're arguing with the network and Barry can go step back. Like when a manager – or like a coach on basketball when a player starts yelling at a ref and the coach puts him behind them right, right. and the coach does it. That's what a manager's job. But between getting gigs and doing like improvs and getting your price up and getting your own show, you don't fucking need him at all. He's dead weight. But you don't care once when you have that loyalty thing. But my thing is I'm getting at this age where I'm battling loyalty, where I'm going, look, man, I'm looking around me and guys that – that may have a lesser nice guy reputation is they, they, you could this this work. You, you what see is it? it about cats that people there's like people are so quick to bad mouth. You the know guy. what? It, it's a reputation because he's honest, dude. He'll tell you he doesn't think you're the funny. reputation is that he's a scumbag in the game. I don't know. Look, no, I'm just I, saying. I didn't say shit. You, well, you got big eyes and chicken head. Because I'm like, yeah. Well, how? I, exactly. That's, I'm not getting big, exactly. I'm not defending him, I'm asking. Why, why I didn't f- never fuck with Barry. He was, we, he was interested because I was a young new guy. That was Barry's niche. Yeah. You know, to get the young talented motherfuckers in. Yeah. When I first came. I just didn't like Barry's this. That the thing you do, I just, I didn't like that. You didn't him. him because you didn't like I his didn't voice? like that he always seemed like he was trying to get in your mind. I didn't like it. Let me answer like, that question with a question. Yeah. Yeah, but, you got, but Barry's also a guy, if you go, shut the fuck up, he'll go, fair enough, man. But, but Jay, that's the relationship that you have with him, which helps. See, I didn't have that. Barry was very intimidating. He was a, he was the guy, he handled you. You thought he, he was Dirk Dane. Nowitzki. He, he, yes. He, 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 he yes. He, he was fun. He looked just like him, too, by the way. Yeah. Barry looks just like Dirk Nowitzki. And he's just and he's six seven. Like Dirk. And he's up there in height, so people freak out. I used to feel like he was he used to try to be a guru with me, but I He thought he was trying to be a guru. But I would I didn't have I didn't I I avoided him when he did now I could now you I'm don't at want... a place where I could go, Barry, listen, just shut the fuck up. But yeah. back then I was new and I was like, you you see he had Red Johnny, he had Keith, he had Juan, he had Jew, he had he had everybody who was somebody in the yeah, game yeah, yeah. in New York. Chappelle. Chappelle. So, oh, that's the that's the story I heard. The Chappelle story with him. That's the one I could go back and go. This is what I heard, whether it's true or not. I'd like to that, hear about it. Uh, Dave's dad died. This is what I heard. And again, I think I've heard this too. But I want Dave's to hear. dad died, and in Ohio. In Ohio, yeah. and Dave's canceled all his. His um upcoming shows. You're canceling your shows just because you're banned. Band exactly, exactly. That's the story. No. no. Oh. And and <laughs> what he did was Dave canceled all the shows, and then he told Barry, "I can't do these things." And then Dave, again, this is speculation, and this is what I heard on the street. But one of my Dave, famous wait, quotes: "Word on the street is word on the street. Word on the street is word on the street." It's more powerful but than a printing press. Let's be honest, though. Stop acting like. Fucking that word on the street don't count because you're from the streets. The word no, on the street does. I'm saying it like it's the most reliable. It's the most reliable. Okay. If you go enough. to school and they go, Chauncey's looking for you. Guess what? Chauncey's, Chauncey's looking, looking for you. you. Right. If so, you read the paper and they go, this might happen. This might happen. Right. But you know from going to public school, you show up and they go, Ooh, Anthony said, and you're like, wow. Fu-. And you yep. all day you knew that motherfucker was gonna yep. come out and hit you in the face. Yep. Because someone just said it. So the word word on the street is word on the street. Was that? Dave was mourning, pulled out. Barry <laughs> didn't cancel the gigs. He waited until it got too close to cancel. Right. And then he said, Dave can't do it. Can you use Jay? Right. Whatever. Right. Whoever it was. And so Dave's in the street. He didn't know about it. So Dave goes and somebody sees him walking around and goes, Dave, man, I'm, why didn't you show up to... Fucking wherever university, man. We loved you, man. You just didn't show up. They had, right. they had to go watch this other guy. He goes, I canceled that shit years ago. Yeah. You know? And Barry never canceled. I can it. see Barry. I mean, it's fucking diabolical. That's a shitty. I mean, but, but I can I'm also saying. see a manager 
saying like in the back of his mind like what if he what if he needs this to come around because Barry didn't need Dave's fucking ten percent of University of Milwaukee. There's always there's always some way to but those ten percent add up. Yeah, I guess. there's always a way to make it look like. But, but, but and the Barry had nothing thing to right. Was when you asked me that right that the. the the um frame the framing of it is that he he was a he, he was a scumbag the framing of it it seems to me too like Barry he's a guy that for, there's some he's very polarizing but but the thing people will fuck if if he's this way you go like this this is a motherfucker that's that like me who's having trouble with the whole system I have a guy that I I love as a person but. Are we getting as many things as we can get? And I and I start going through this, and you go, wait a minute. If everybody feels Barry is this dude that is some scumbag, right? Why are they doing so much business with him? Like the he, he gets business done, right? Or even or Becky, he gets shit done. He gets. I've never heard anybody done. say Dave Becky was a scumbag. I've heard bad things about Dave. Oh really? Yeah. The well, only it's, guy. It's all bullshit. It's Bernie all... Brillstein's the only guy that died without a negative thing said about him. Right. You never, never heard. Never heard nothing about Brillstein. Always, even Raph, the guys that at my level that I would know. All right, all right, I never even right. heard that much anything really about um, Messina. I, I actually like like. like He's him a, a fucking lot. crazy person. I went to his house because he has a wiffle ball tournament at his house, and I grew up playing wiffle ball every day. And I went in there with a chip on my shoulder, like, man, I'm gonna fucking school these fucking Dungeons and Dragons zeros at this fucking <laughs> wiffle ball. And he had a wiffle ball stadium, and they hyped it to me, like, you gotta go wiffle ball stadium. And you wiffle ball is supposed to be like Bugs Bunny, like three miles an hour, and his big looping curve balls right, and shit. Right, right, right. These motherfuckers tape the ball. And just throw it as far, hard as they fucking can. And I'm, you're holding that little plastic bat. And I'm going, and now I'm the new guy. I'm the interloper. I'm the brand new guy in this Patton Oswald, David Cross world. I'm the jock. You know what I mean? And I'm the guy going, this isn't how you fucking play. They've been playing this every day for four years. And I show up going, what the fuck? You don't fucking tape the ball. What the fuck? And I was just out in the streets. And I'm like, this would be so much more exactly. fun if it was. You that bitch. Like I was ready, bro. You came in that bitch in with mother, your mind. And a motherfucker alive will beat me with a ball. <laughs> I said that at Super Bowl last year at uh, Radio Row, and this guy from Dallas was wearing a fucking Wiffle Ball Champion T-shirt. Uh, ben and Skin is this radio show in Dallas, and he challenged me, and we cleared out a fucking banquet room. And this, I, I just, you, I, I just hit him. It was crazy. And he had to go on the radio, and everybody just called and made fun of him because they filmed it and they put it. They go, we'll put it on YouTube. Your humiliation. I said, all right. Keep talk- it was like fucking Roy Jones and James Tony's talking shit to him. When did you know you were funny? When did you know you wanted to do comedy? I didn't mean to stump you. Jesus. Um, <laughs> the look on your face. Seriously? Yeah. 17. 17? Like dead ass. And then it took till I was 22 to do it. So I, I talked myself out of it five for five years. I just didn't do it. And finally, I did it at 22, 1992. But at 17, I wanted to start. Are you going to start talking yourself into shit? I do. You got to understand, dude. You're yeah. talking to is that true? A, a different dude. Does he Is he a different dude now where he talks himself into shit as opposed to talking himself out of shit? I'm seeing that, yeah. Yeah, good. I'm better at that. You're too fucking good to be a guy on the shelf. You can't be like the guy on the bench because the coach doesn't know you're there. You got to be the guy to get on the plane and go do the office. You're too fucking funny, and you have a presence that's too. I'm way better than I used to be, though. And you're way better. Here's the other thing. And in I, terms this, of attitude, way better. This is gonna sound cocky as all fuck, but we both know it's the reason we're in the business. Okay. You see guys on Star Search and even the Improv, and you go, "I'm better than these motherfuckers." Right. You know, when you go and do these shows, you can kill them. You can crush them. Do me a fucking favor, and the next time they ask, get on the fucking airplane and do the show. Because you're too good not to do it. And when you do do it, all those people splinter off into their other shows, 
And one, all it takes is one out of those 14 bullshit producers to get a two broke girls and go, hey, you know who'd be a great super? <laughs> Not a super. That, that's, I felt that. You know that. who can play Bookman? Bookman. The new Bookman. <laughs> uh, he wouldn't do Bookman. The, 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 no, I know. I'm just saying. The, I know what you're saying. He didn't have to suck anybody's dick, and for the money, who cares? The Charlie Sheen roast was a big step in that Huge. direction. Huge. Because I, I, my, my instinct usually is to say, get the fuck out. But like I said, the instinct to say no is always there with a reasoning that can make sense. Like I didn't do flavor flay roast because I didn't do it because of, you know, oh, I didn't know I'm going to do that. So I decided to do, the, the, the Charlie Sheen roast helped me in that terms but i'm a lot better with that than i was uh a long time ago i will give myself credit for that so what's the weirdest celebrity that you've met that you were surprised they knew who you were slash really yeah slash is a fan and he knew you from you tough crowd stuff he just stuff yeah he just knew me already so that was very interesting and where'd you guys bump into each other uh, at the roast oh really yep Slash. slash. Who took right. a shot at Slash? It was someone had a great uh, at Slash. Oh Jesus, Charlie and and Seth. They were just talking about his old music. They basically <laughs> fucking with him because. <laughs> and I love you. I love Jezelnik out of nowhere. I don't know where he came from, but he made me laugh on the last roast before Charlie. Well, Shane. that's what he. That, and that's what. And then when me. you say you called him a waiter from medieval times. Yeah, just like get my fucking turkey leg, motherfucker. Who are you? Where I'm from? Who are you? But he, when he was introducing him in that world, and that's all, but that's because the last. Roast. Yes. Did you see him? On yeah. That? No. He, bro, he hit that shit so hard. His lines. Jeff Ross has been doing roast longer than Whitney Cummings was a glint in the eye of the guy that gang raped her mother. <laughs> like, I mean, he said shit that was so. And a guy you don't know, hey, the situation is here. You know, if you spend as much time reading as you did chasing skanks, you wouldn't have AIDS. <laughs> and people are going, who the fuck is this guy? It was crazy. So, like, exactly. so the next time you do a roast, now you ha now on the podcast, I'm saying it out loud, you have to do the next, the next roast. roast. You have to. That, that's, the, that's, the, that's the place they put you. No, it's the place that they need you. And now the people that didn't know who you were that saw you take out Shatner and saw you take out Jezelnik and do that fucking Hanna Barbera run at Seth uh, McFarlane, right? McFarlane, like now those people are going to go, okay, good. This is a good roast because they're going to say these people are here, he's here, he's here. Pat now you're the guy. Patrice right. is here. Right. Like now you have to do the roast and you got to talk yourself into realizing that that's why it's all it just it's step 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 i, I agree i can't disagree the with next that. roast I, if they're roasting fucking you know peter brady just go and just fucking blow him up and get out of there i'm i'm that, jay five years ago i told you to shut the fuck up yeah on that. i don't want to hear it but you can tell I've me changed. That too. no 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 i i i you and i have always for an odd had an odd like be quiet <laughs> <laughs> From day one, I don't know what it was. <laughs> That's funny. An odd, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though. I'm like up in Boston and Steve Cato and doing those weird fucking. <laughs> An odd, be quiet. <laughs> An odd, be quiet. I, oh, will, be I will say, I'm saying I'm, I'm a lot more open to thinking that I, because I don't want to be just a modder in this game. Like, oh, all the things that I could have been and. Oh, you gotta watch this YouTube thing. Wow, yeah, I don't, I wanna, I wanna enjoy the business. I just, I just know what makes me happy. Yeah. And I just wanna be, I wanna be happy too, you know what I'm saying? But I wanna just make a bunch of money. If the, if the roast doesn't particularly make you happy, you have to now compartmentalize and realize it's now a job, one of many jobs that you do and check that box. You are now in the roast. You're in that little group of people Fair enough. that people go, I know it's going to be Jeff Ross is like this royalty in roasts and you're as funny as Jeff Ross. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, but wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and Jezelnik. But wouldn't you? And Jezelnik is not this, yeah. this. And not as, a f far as, as far as a, a fear of anything, but you go, you go, whoa, Jay Moore fucking, Oh, the, the roast, 17 years straight, you do the roast. Isn't there a place where, like, you hosted the NHL award. Motherfucker, you're on two. Like, you, you hosted the NHL award. we're not award. talking about 17 years. Yes, yeah, sorry, go ahead. You hosted the NHL award. Yeah. 
and you you did well both times. Yeah. Isn't there a third time where you go, let me just n- let them? No. I I'm like a fucking dog with a toy in its mouth. That's my fucking job, and no one's taking See, that shit from think, me. Always I'm like think, a pitcher that don't want to come think out of the game. Them, let them let them have enjoyed your, the moment. There's that's where the money comes in as well. Why should I give this fucking checkup? This is an A night of my life. And I talk for 10 minutes. And I get a check. I hang around with these people. Everyone enjoys what I do. Why would I release that to let some douchebag come in and do it? Eh. See, that's where... I, it, Why? I, I don't know. I can't argue with that. Because your, your money, out of all this interview, what, what you motivated by dough. But here's what you also have to understand. I've this year I've had four jobs where I made no money. I don't make any money from the podcast. And the podcast well, I tell you what, money's on the way. Ment- mentally you're investing something so that money can but if it's this so podcast down is the, useless to you. What do you want you. me to say, Patrice? Vision. It's such a long sight. It's not short sightedness. Right. And you gotta take the long sight, the blogging for the real housewives of New Jersey. I didn't make any money for that. But do I do it co- go, I just want to write a blog? No, I write it because I go, hey, maybe housewives that watch The Real Housewives will come to my shows. Because ultimately, everything you and I are doing, I would guess, is to get more people in the rooms right. where we are our absolute selves. I agree. I'm out. Thanks, Patrice. I love you, sweetie. Thanks, man. Say say, say some like nice goodbye thing. Oh, yeah. Fucking Thanks, Jay. Now, let me ask you this. Did it, did this feel at any time like you and I were working? No, because we both talk. I love talking. Yeah, we would, but that's what I'm saying. Like hey. you got to get your own podcast up and running. And just I'll tell you this right house, now. I'll tell you this right now. Break it. If if <laughs> if I if I Why end up I with a podcast, if I end break up if I have a podcast, it's gonna be not that you wanted this, but I'm gonna say this. It will be directly attributed to. Jay Moore. Good. And I'm, I'll say why. No, once you stand up, you're out, motherfucker. Yeah, but I'm going to say why. <laughs> he stood up you're, on the table. I'm, I'm on, I think, one end of the spectrum. There's a middle, and I think you're on the other end of the spectrum in terms of you have a lot of philosophy on why to do it. I have a lot of philosophy on why not to do it yeah. in things yeah. in general. So... What you're saying, your your conviction on why to do it is interesting. And not not just a podcast, just anything. Where yeah. you go, why not do that? Because my idea is, why do another roast? I did well on this one. Why bother to do the next thing that I really don't want to do anyway? But you have an interesting spe- scope on why to do you it. You have to do the next roast. Because now people that didn't know who you were... I mean, what the fuck are we in this business for? To fill, to fill rooms. I, right, but I got, don't forget, I got in this business. Now I, I go, I go, look, I tell people funny is different than comedy. And I didn't realize that shit till 10 years in at, that I did it because I was a funny motherfucker. And I just thought, I didn't think about what you were going to be. I didn't get in this to be a star. I got in it because I wasn't a good employee. I, I, I just thought there was a way to do comedy. I just thought funny goes to comedy. Right. Then you realize funny ain't comedy. You realize it's business. And right. so I'm trying to I was trying to find that place where where, you know, because I'm self destructive, even in my life, right. I go, let me find a way to be a be really really funny and and a really good comic. I, I wanted to be everything and that and that that's that's where the happiness was coming in. So I do want money, Jay. I do want fame and all that bullshit that I seem to be grudge. But I want it. That there's got to be a place to just do it so it's not. It's more things that I want to do than more things that I don't want to do. The things you but I'm good do, at it. The things you want to do are a direct result of an accumulation of the things maybe you didn't really feel like doing. But when you do enough of them together... And Slash knows you from stuff. Mm-hmm. Think of all that stuff you didn't feel like fucking doing. And Sla- But like Slash ain't a producer or like a director. Right. And the more shit you cobble together, and you do want to do the roast. It's not like you go, I don't want to fucking do a roast. I know I know. if the roast was downstairs in this hotel, and me and you could just get on the elevator right now and do it, thought we'd be fucking doing it in two seconds. 
Fair enough. Right? Right? I mean, to a degree. But, but to what you said you want to do, right. to be like Patrice O'Neill, Anderson Cooper, John Stewart, it's the it's the accumulation of all these things right. that gets you the credit and the the industry cred, the street Maybe I'm cred. confused. Like it was the old time Johnny Carson where you could do one good thing and then nah, that boom. Shit's over. You know what I'm saying? You nah. can do something. And show people that you can do it. Nope. Because I noticed after the after the rose out, I've been in the game for a while. People know, you know, my pedigree, but still, it was almost like people that already knew I was a good comic was going. Now you're a good. Now, like they yeah. they create things that are official. Even yeah. though I do, I did the elephant in the room. I go, I'm very proud of that. I like to present that as who I am, right? As a comic and what I think. Most of the people in the world don't see each thing we do, so you have to do a whole as bunch many of shit. things yeah. as possible to keep that pie chart filling up with people that know who you are, right? And then at the end of the day, you can do whatever the fuck you want, and you'll get autonomy. Louis has autonomy. That is the craziest shit you could have. More right. than money. Right. Like when we were doing more sports, for some reason they let us do whatever we wanted. It but, was crazy. but wasn't that one of the best, your favorite things you ever did? Yeah, but I got fucking paid. Yeah, but wasn't that one of your favorite things Absolutely. you ever did? Ab- you want to know why? Because that's your Cause shit. Because I went to Michael Eisner and I told him the idea for a show and he goes, sounds great. Who do I call? And we were like, it was me and Katz. But that, but I, I know the and accumulation, like, but wouldn't you? But the percentage, you seem to love that show. The percentage of people that know me from that show is less. Than but a wait half a minute, that's what I'm saying. You see, you at the other end, OJ. I'm saying for your spirit, that show, even yeah. though no, no little people right. know. Wouldn't you love to been had do, just stay doing that show? I would have done it for ten years. And even if it didn't get you your accumulation, yeah. it got your. This is what I enjoy. It, yes. So, how many people know me from Tough Crowd? I don't know, but but the, but what we did was that was what I what was tapping into what I would love to do you, and all people, the time. Yeah, and people love you on Tough Crowd. You know, like that's you know that right? Okay. You now have a responsibility to check off as many of those boxes as possible so that the next time there's a tough crowd or a Patrice O'Neill or a John Stewart. You have Stewart, a responsibility to who? To your audience that's going to watch that show that could be 10 years from now, five years from now, that when that opportunity comes up, you have to be in the conversation of the three motherfuckers that could possibly do this job. Right. They're going to go, it could be Craig Kilborn or it could be this guy. And then somebody goes, Patrice O'Neill. And everybody in the room goes, ooh, that would be fucking great if we could right, get right, Patrice. Right. And there, no one goes, from what? Where is he from? They go, oh, the fucking roast, tough crowd. And you just build all that shit up. And you just you just hand in this fucking wheelbarrow of you, and you dump the shit in the office, and you walk out, and they talk about you after you leave. You you create a problem for them. Your name has to come up. I just realized something. What? <laughs> I'm lazy. That sounds like too much work. <laughs> <laughs> She's so new, ladies and gentlemen. Put your name on it.